Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is the first lecture of Geometric Algorithm course series. And in this lecture, we are going to learn the very basic of Geometric Algorithm, that is orientation of given points. So, let's get started. So, the problem statement is very simple. You are given three points in 2D space, say A, B, C, and we have to find whether their orientation, the orientation of the points A, B, C is collinear, clockwise or anti-clockwise, right? So this is the problem statement. It is very easy as you might guess. And so is the implementation of the solution of this problem. So just to give you an idea, this is clockwise. As you can see, the uh, points A, B and C form a clockwise tuple. So uh, in this case, they form collinear and in this case, they form an anti-clockwise uh, tuple. So uh, the orientation depends upon the order of the points that you take if you see a b and c are clockwise uh, if you consider a c and b this is anti-clockwise okay so orientation depends upon the order of points so i'm uh, here the order taken is a and then b and then c so keep that in mind orientation depends upon the order of the point that you are taking so uh, in this case we will be discussing a b and c so uh, so here you can see this is clockwise this is collinear this is anti-clockwise i'm assuming that you are already aware of what is clockwise collinear and anti-clockwise so basically you are given three points and you have to uh, uh, you have to return or you have to print whether they are clockwise anti-clockwise collinear and so on okay so how we'll be defining the orientation of three points of course we'll be using slope of the lines so uh, the slope of line a b and the slope of line BC will help us determine whether the points A, B and C are collinear, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Okay. So you might already know if you are given two points, the line, uh, uh, the slope of the line passing through those two points is Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Right. So uh, the slope of line AB would be Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Similarly, the slope of line BC would be Y3 minus Y1 divided by X3 minus X2. So you might see here just just to explain you the higher the angle made uh, with x axis and that line the higher the angle made by the uh, x axis and the line uh, the higher the slope so you see if uh, this in this case you can see the poorly drawn drawing by me uh, here you can see the slope of line a b is smaller as compared to slope of line b c and you can clearly see the points a b c are uh, anti-clockwise right so if slope of a b is smaller than slope of b c the uh, the points will be anti-clockwise if slope of a b is greater than slope of b c they will be clockwise and if the slope slope of both the lines are equal then they will be collinear okay so we already know the slope of a b would be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 assuming x1 y1 are coordinates of a y2 uh, y1 uh, x2 y2 are coordinates of b and x3 y3 are coordinates of c okay slope of a a b would be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 and slope of bc would be y3 minus y1 uh, y3 minus y2 divided by x3 minus x2 okay so you see if slope of a b is smaller than slope of bc that means this expression would result into uh, into an integer or a number which is smaller than zero okay basically this expression will be less than zero if slope of a b is greater than slope of b c this expression will be greater than zero and if they are equal to zero i mean if they are uh, they are equal then this expression will result uh, will result into zero sorry so here you see this expression you can uh, rearrange to form this the problem with this expression is that uh, it is possible that the division will result in a uh, uh, floating point integer right uh, in points basically and floating point or double are not as precise as integer so what we did we uh, we rearrange them so that we don't have any division operation so that the expression is 100 percent accurate i mean the result which you will get after the uh, after evaluating this is not 100% accurate that because of the uh, floating point or double integer precision error but here we don't have any division so we can work with uh, integer itself be it long long int or integer doesn't matter so we transform this expression uh, this expression into this so basically the sign of this expression will determine whether the uh, orientation is 
clockwise anti-clockwise or collinear basically if this expression result into negative the other answer would be anti-clockwise if this expression result into positive the answer would be clockwise if this expression result into zero that means collinear if i show you the code if you want to code it yourself go ahead and do that all right let me show you the code so here you see what i'm doing i've just defined a uh, structure named point and it contains two point of integer basically the integer integer point of integer coordinates of the point it can be uh, depending upon your implementation of the problem this can also be a uh, double or float if the points are non-integer so what what are we doing we are simply finding the orientation if it is zero linear if one uh, that would be written from here so let's understand this first so we are provided three points a b and c or basically p1 p2 p3 we are evaluating right the the formula that we just discussed we are evaluating that if it is equals to zero it is of course collinear in collinear a uh, zero indicates collinear one indicates uh, uh zero indicates collinear one indicates uh, clockwise and two indicates anti-clockwise okay so if the return value is zero it is linear if it is one it is clockwise if it's uh, otherwise it is anti-clockwise okay so let me just show you see here i've used three points one four two five let me just show this as well so i've used three points one four two five and three ten of course uh if i say this is a this is b this is c then a b c is uh anti-clockwise right so let's just go ahead and test it so one four two five one four two five and the last point is is three ten so three ten okay see here if i simply compile and run should result in counterclockwise as you can see right so this is correct and let's test for another point let's just ignore this this and let's go for this point five five you can clearly see in this case a b and c is clockwise right let's just change this point to five five so the result should be clockwise okay clockwise you can like uh, you can see or you can use like third point which should be just ignore this ignore this the third point is three six this is linear or uh, a b and c now would be collinear so let's go for go ahead and do this three six should be collinear or linear so here see linear see this works perfectly fine depending upon whether integer range can be up to tens for six or tens for nine or uh, change it to long long int okay uh, just make sure uh, you you take care of the integer overflow so yeah this was all about this lecture this 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 very technique will be used in calculating this this will be helping you in learning uh, convex hull which is which is considered to be one of the uh, uh, one of the complex algorithm from geometric algorithm series okay so next we'll be learning com uh, the convex hull algorithm which is not as difficult uh the its implementation and the way it is used in competitive programming can be uh, complex but the implementation and finding out convex hull is not that difficult so in the next lecture we'll be learning complex uh, uh sorry convex hull so yeah this was all for this lecture thank you guys for watching if you have any doubt or query you can ask it in the comment section or any suggestion of course so uh till the next video drops keep coding thank you